good. Thank y'all. Yes. Y'all. Thank y'all. Okay. Perfect. All right. So Maya Elias is a personal branding strategist that teaches experts how to position themselves as the go-to authority figure in their industry so they can confidently launch their signature offer. She's helped hundreds of students and clients get clear on their message, confidently increase their prices, have successful five-figure launches with their masterclasses, webinars, courses, and programs. Her main mission is to help women increase their impact and income with their gifts and expertise. When she's not helping her clients build their online empire, she can be found traveling, scrolling through IG, or watching Hulu. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the building, Maya Elias. Thank hey, you. thank you so much for having me, Marlena. Yes, 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 yes. I'm so excited to get into this. As I said, we've been talking about, we've been spending the last couple months getting clear on our offers, getting clear on kind of our vision in general, and, and now we're working on our marketing. And so I'm just so excited to bring you in here to just help us. A lot of us have questions around monetizing and, and converting our audience into um, paying customers. So of course, you're the first person that I thought of for this. So <laughs> I am going to go ahead and get right into these questions. Uh, and we're going to kind of open up, guys. And, and again, Maya is all over. So like, if you don't know her background, her story, there are so many podcasts and places that you can find out about it. So I'm going to get right into some of these nitty gritty uh, questions and encourage you to continue to, um, you know, get to know Maya. So uh, Maya, you are obviously without question one of the goats of storytelling online could you just share with us a little bit about how you became so great at this skill and why storytelling is so important mm. well thank you first of all um i think when it comes to like messaging storytelling and content creation i think it comes naturally to me because I'm a really like open and vulnerable person. And I think that it is a little bit hard for people to be vulnerable. So that's why they are afraid to tell their story. But I love being able to tell my story. I love talking about taboo topics that people uh, feel nervous about talking about, you know, especially money and stuff like that. So um, I think that it's something that is natural to me, but I have been able to kind of like, you know, create a framework, of course, of how other people who are feeling a little bit nervous or vulnerable about telling their story can do so. And I think when it comes to storytelling, a lot of people get nervous because they feel like, I don't have this like big grand story to tell. Like, I don't have the oh, I got cancer and then I got healed or my life changed forever and, and now I'm doing something, you know, big and miraculous. And a lot of times we downplay our experiences. We downplay the things that we've been through. And a lot of times we downplay it because we're so strong that to us, it was like, oh, well, I'm just resilient. So of course I went through. But then when you actually sit and you're forced to verbalize your story, you're like, yo, I've actually been through a lot. Like when I used to do one-on-one -on -one sessions, like blame brand clarity sessions and have people tell their story, it was, it was always an emotional process because people were actually forced to sit and reflect everything that they had been through. So um, I think, you know, we have our big brand story and I think people get intimidated by that, but then we also just have our everyday story as well, right? So like, you don't have to have this big uh, giant story to be uh, relatable or to be important. It's not really about being important. It's about being relatable. So you have your everyday story, right? So like maybe my everyday story right now is I started working out with a new trainer and I'm not supposed to eat bread, but I really love pizza and that's just my story. Or maybe my story is, you know, it's the first year living in my house as a single woman. Like, it, it's crazy. I didn't know about all of these changes or, you know, I'm renovating and it's actually really fun. And that's my story, you know? So it's just the everyday um, parts of your life that you feel comfortable sharing. And I think when it comes to telling your story, you want to talk about the experiences that you've been through. But you also want to talk about um, experiences or vulnerable situations that you feel confident talking about or that you've overcome and that you've healed from. Because I think some people think vulnerability means I have to tell what I'm going through right now in mm. this very moment and I haven't overcome it and I haven't healed from it. And that could be very dangerous because the truth is there are some people online that don't want to see us win, right? So it's like, I'm only going to share 
um, any painful parts of my story that I've already healed from, that I've already overcome. Because now when you say it back to me, you can't hurt me with it because I'm already healed from it. Oh, girl, I am so glad <laughs> that you said that. <laughs> that is so true. And I think many of us, you know, we, many of us need to be in therapy, period. But <laughs> Outside of that, you know, we, we can go to social media and places to kind of like air out that, that laundry. And I'm so glad you gave us that sort of um, boundary <laughs> to set for, for doing just that. We, we do have to wait until we're healed. That is so, so powerful. And I'm so glad you also mentioned vulnerability because of how key that is in storytelling um, and, and how scary it can be. But I, I've also found how freeing it can be too to just, you know what, this is, this is my story. And it is regular, regular <laughs> in a lot of ways, but it's mine. And exactly. yep. yeah. So I think that, that's yeah. what people connect with too. It's like, you know, the imperfect parts of you, it's like, Maya's imperfect, Maya is regular, but she's still spectacular at the same time. It's like, I don't, I, you know, I didn't come from a family with a lot of money. It's like, you know, I'm first generation American of, of two Liberian parents. Like I have a, a, you know, a regular story. I dropped out of college. I went to a community college. So it's the regular parts of you that people are going to be able to connect to because all the extraordinary stuff, people feel nervous, like, oh, well, I can never measure up or I can never be as successful as her because this is her story. It's completely different than mine. So don't be afraid to tell the regular parts of your story. Don't feel like you have to like beef up your story to be something like extravagant. Yes, yes. We all watch reality TV. Like, <laughs> just give me that what's real, you know? <laughs> I, well, yeah, no. <laughs> real. <laughs> Uh, I love this. I love this. So, you know, for, for those who are listening right now, um, either on uh, live or on the recording later, what are some concrete steps that you would recommend them to take in order to uncover their unique brand story? Besides, of course, attending Impact Weekend. But we won't get into that later. <laughs> Yeah. So I think when it comes to understanding your brand story, you always want to think about like, why am I doing this? Like what personal attachment do I have to the work that I am doing? Of course, especially when it comes to your personal brand, like there's some businesses where it's like, Oh, I'm just doing this business because it's going to generate money. And that's fine too. There's, there's nothing wrong with starting a business where you just want to make money. It doesn't even have to be uh, tied to you personally. So long they're still doing it with integrity but I think when it comes to your personal brand and you're building a purpose-filled business, you have to think about like, how does this tie into my purpose? Why am I doing this, right? So for me, like with my story of like dropping out of college and being a graphic designer and, and working with a lot of um, black female entrepreneurs that were primarily women of faith, I, I honestly could have gone in two different directions with my brand. I could have gone the route of, I wanna teach other graphic designers how to charge more, how to run digital agencies and how to be confident because that was part of my story. But the other part of my story is as a web and graphic designer, I realized that a lot of people didn't know how to create content for their website. They didn't know how to drive traffic to their website. They didn't know how to uh, utilize social media to drive traffic to their website. So I went the direction of like, let me help with the messaging and the content because I realized that's actually where my gifting was. So you want to, there are, um, three things you want to think about when it comes to your story. You want to think about your past. What are your experiences? What's your education like, right? And it doesn't even have to be formal education. Like when I dropped out of college, I studied a lot, a lot of the branding industry through YouTube when I was still um, doing web and graphic design. I, I, I was a self-taught graphic designer. So think about your education and your experiences. What are the things that you really enjoy doing? Who did you help? right? Who's the, the people that you were helping consistently in your audience? And I remember as a, as a graphic designer, I swore, I swore that my audience was like corporate white males age 45 mm. and up. And it's like, sis, you're lying. You're <laughs> lying to yourself. Because when you check your PayPal, it's black women in their 30s who are paying you consistently. Yes. So get this idea out of your mind that only white men have money and start really doing the work and serving people who are paying you consistently, which is black women. So think about your experiences and who you are serving and who is showing up um, to, to pour into themselves through your business. Um, and then think about the problems that you either experienced in your journey um, that prompted you to want to create a solution 
or think about the problems that your ideal client was facing, right? So like how I said, I could have gone in either direction. If I would have gone the direction of solely wanting to focus on uh, creatives, photographers, web designers, graphic designers, the industry that I was in, I would have uh, positioned my story as like the problem I was dealing with was that people weren't taking me seriously or they weren't charging me what I wanted to charge or I didn't know how to put together proposals. That's the problem in my story. Right. So if if your ideal client, um, your ideal client might match your journey and they just might be a few steps behind where you were. Or if your story and your experiences is based on who you were helping, you want to think about what were the problems that you recognize that they were dealing with and how you wanted to create that solution. So, you know, the other example of like I was working with female entrepreneurs and I recognized that their problem was they didn't know how to come up with website copy. They didn't know how to create content. They didn't know how to increase their website traffic. So that was the problem that I specifically wanted to solve. So when you think about your story, think about your experiences, a problem that you're recognizing within yourself or within your ideal client, and then the overall purpose or the solution of that problem and how you want to help them. And that's really going to tell you like, what your overall brand purpose is. Yes, yes. And I'm, I'm so glad that you also brought up that we all have different facets inside of our story. There's multiple directions that we can take. And I think sometimes that kind of muddies it even more for us. So I'm so glad that you brought that up and gave us those three steps, guys. So hopefully you guys heard that. Know your past experiences, understand kind of what got you to where you are knowing who you're servicing, what their problem is, and, 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 and how did you kind of overcome, uh, overcome the problems that they're experiencing uh, in, your, in your own life. That kind of, hopefully that kind of sums it up. Um, mm -hmm. So hopefully you guys are um, taking notes because this is definitely all of, uh, all of the magic that she gives us. So thank you so much for that. Um, mm -hmm. So kind of in that same vein of just like struggling around content right many of my members know how important sharing content consistently is um, but struggle with a lack of confidence in that area just like you mentioned um, that being kind of what your target customer struggles with and I hear a lot of similar themes in those struggles like not knowing what to say dealing with imposter syndrome, um, not wanting to say and do what other people are already doing, like, you know, and, and just in general, wanting to produce genuine content that feels authentic to them and not wanting to be too salesy. So like, you have given us so many <laughs> good nuggets of, you know, mindset hacks uh, for a lot of those struggles, those mental hurdles that we face when we're trying to create content. Could you share some of those um, mindset hacks, any that come to your mind, and then any tactical strategies to help us overcome some of these hurdles? Yeah, that's a great question. So I completely understand like, oh, I don't really know what to say or somebody else is already saying it. I always say that good content is just a conversation between you and the person that you want to serve. That's it. It's just a conversation. So it's like, what is the conversation that you want to have with the people that you want to see level up? What's the conversation that you want to have with the people that you want to see transform their lives, their businesses, their money, their families, whatever the transformation is. And sometimes you won't know what to say to them if you're not having real life conversations with them. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes we, we come into this online business and immediately we want to automate everything. And we try to even automate the, the market research. We try to automate the getting to know our community. And it's like, no, have conversations in the DMs with these people. Start your Facebook groups. Get on the call with some of these people and just have a genuine conversation with them. Sales gets easier when you don't have to guess what they want. Mm. But you stop guessing when you actually have genuine conversations with them. So, um, you know, the first thing to creating excellent content and creating content that is like a conversation is having real life conversations. Um, and what I would do is maybe I would, I would reach out to people who have been following you consistently. They're always commenting on your posts. They're always sending you DMs and just say like, Hey, I'd love to hop on like a quick 10 minute call with you just to see how you're doing. I really appreciate you supporting my content. I want to learn a little bit more about how I could better serve you with my content and allow them to tell you what their goals are, what their dreams are. And you as a coach, like 
you probably already naturally go into solution mode. So as they're telling you their struggles and they're telling you their dreams, you're probably like in your head rapid fire, like, oh girl, all you got to do is this. All you have to do is this. Oh, I, I have a, a three simple step um, process where you can do this. Write down all of the things that you just want to blurt out to them on the phone and just take note of it. And that is your content right there. Ugh, so good. Like you make it sound so easy and so simple, but you know, it really is. I, and I'm so glad you, you brought up like market research. We have you, so many of us try, I think we struggle with the confidence because like you said, we haven't taken the time to get to know our customer. You think that you're just supposed to magically have all of it inside of you already. And it's like, no, it's in them. They are going to tell you what they need from you. So, uh, right. so, right. so good. Good. So, so good. Um, and, and give me, if you, if you have any more nuggets around like genuine content versus not being too salesy, I also want to kind of get that on record too. If you have any other, um, recommendations for overcoming that fear of being too salesy. Yeah, for sure. I always laugh when people are worried about being salesy. I'm like, girl, if you don't get you this sale. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you in business? I mean... <laughs> First, you have to be excellent in sales and marketing if you want your business to thrive. So I cannot create the impact and transformation that I desire if I do not master sales and marketing. So guess what? I'm going to have to ask you for some money if you want to continue working with me. That's just how the transformation happens. And what I do know after years of like, you know, being in coaching and stuff like that is the best transformations come from people who put their money where their mouth is. Mm -hmm. So I know for a fact that if I allow somebody to come into my program for free and I compare them to the person that paid money 10 times out of 10, the person that paid money is going to show up more because they put forth an investment. So now they really have to show up. They're sacrificing more. There is a sacrifice. So don't be afraid of being salesy. And I think like a lot of people, when it comes to being salesy, maybe they just kind of feel like, oh, I'm being too pushy or whatever. But here's the thing about market research and why it's so important in making sure you're attracting the right people. The right people want you to sell to them. The right people want you to sell to them. Imagine if I had, you know, done a webinar on how to uh, like master your content creation and I gave you some tips and stuff like on that. And then at the end of it, I was just like, okay, well, bye. People would like my ideal client would be like, wait, but how do I work with you? Like, I need more. I need more. Please tell me like, how much is it? What does the process look like? The right person wants you to sell to them. If you ever feel like you're being pushy or salesy, it's because you're having a conversation with somebody who's not mentally in the place to make the investment or they are just not your ideal client. And the pain point isn't deep enough for them to want to be able to pay for whatever it is that your solution is. So instead of thinking about I'm being too salesy, I want you to think about, am I having a conversation with the right person that would want to move forward with me? Because that's where there is some confusion or where we feel a little bit awkward, like, okay, I'm asking them for money, but I can't really tell if they want to do this. Like when I get on a sales call, I can usually, for the most part, tell who's a, who's hundred percent yes or i'm just like oh this is not a good fit and if i feel like they're not a good fit i'm not even going to present the offer to them because i don't even want them saying yes even if i present the offer i only want yeses from people that i feel like 100 percent that i am called to serve um so when it comes to you know creating your content and getting them to the point where they are ready to say yes for the sale you just want to provide value um, you want to be able to speak to their pain points. You want to be able to do the storytelling so that they can connect with you. Because a lot of times the yes um, for the sale is them understanding that you know what they're going through, them feeling like they can connect with you, and them feeling confident that you have the solution to what they offer. So make sure your content is around that. So by the time you do ask for the sale, you don't feel sleazy about it. Period. <laughs> <laughs> Period. And I, ugh, that is so true about, um, oh shoot, my, what I was going to say left my brain, but I love every piece of what you just said. <laughs> <It'll come back laughs> <to me. laughs> oh my gosh, this is so good. I'm like, 
uh, asking questions, but also like I'm just trying to wait, take my wait, own personal wait. notes over here. <laughs> wait, she's like, wait, when I do my notes? Oh, good. Like, wait a minute, I need. Uh, uh-uh, I gotta go back and listen to this. Uh, so so good. So, all right, all right, guys. I hope y'all are taking notes. Um, so my next question for you, Maya, is, um, and this is, you know, I'm definitely a marketing nerd um, myself, so I'm always studying people's funnels. Um, we talked a little bit about how to create messaging and and I know that another huge component to um, you know having a successful process of creating and converting people into customers involves having a funnel of some sort um, so I'm always looking at people's funnels um, I'm encouraging my cri- my tribe to do the same because I know there's so much you can learn by just peeping into what other people are doing online so could you if you feel comfortable could you give us a top level breakdown of what your primary marketing funnel is like, and you know, what have been some of your most successful methods for constantly getting new leads and how are you converting them into paying customers and then repeat <laughs> paying customers as well. So any strategies that um, you have that you're using right now, any that you've tried that didn't work, feel free to share um, anything that comes to mind here. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so let me see how I want to kind of like structure this. My brain automatically thinks in bullet points because again, like I'm just naturally like a content creator. So I'm like, okay, first we'll start here. Like what is a funnel? Then what's my most success? Then like, okay. Um, So yes, funnels. And I'm not sure exactly how much you taught of funnels, you know, with your your, um, community. But, you know, a funnel is just like, yo, what's the path to get them from, hey, I just saw you on social media or we just met at a conference to now I want to be inside of your signature program or I want to buy something for you. So I think the most important thing is being crystal clear on what do I want to sell to the person that comes across me? If you're not clear on what you want to sell, then the person that you come across isn't going to be clear on what they should buy. So that's number one. And I think sometimes um, we like create these funnels and then it's like, we're presenting all of these different offers. Like here's a notebook. Okay. If you don't like the notebook, I have a live event. Oh, you don't want to do the live event. I have this masterclass. Like every funnel should have its own path. That is the first thing. Every funnel should have its own path. Don't try to crisscross nothing. It is too confusing. Um, And also just start with something that's basic. So I'm sure you guys have probably heard of like upsell, downsell, cross sell. Just like, girl, get them from, hey, nice meeting you to here goes the product before you try to do any of that other stuff. Before you make your funnel too complicated, can you get consistent sales? Don't um, start adding in a bunch of offers out of fear because that's you know what a lot of people do. I'm like, okay, well maybe this is too expensive. Let me add in the let me give her the twenty dollar offer. You know, um, so the thing uh, first thing again is being super crystal clear, and then understanding how you feel most confident selling. So um, the ways that I teach uh, funnel structure and selling in my program is either through a live webinar or through a live sales call or sometimes uh, a pre-recorded training that would lead to a sales call. But I know for me, I convert best if I get on the phone with somebody or if I am doing um, a, a live webinar. And anytime you can do something live, it's going to convert really well because then you can um, answer any objections in person. So please master doing things live before you try to automate, right? So I know we see like a lot of like evergreen webinars and stuff, but you don't want to automate something that is not converting. And I just can't stress this enough where it's like, please be okay with just doing things manually in your business for the first one to three years. It's fine. Uh, uh, Running a business is going to take some time and it's going to take a few years before you can confidently automate it. It's fine. So you know, if you're thinking, oh, I got to come into this business, I need to automate everything. I don't want to do anything manually. Obviously, there are some things that you can um, put in some software and, and it can run uh, um, automatically. But when you can like master what you do really well manually and, and how you convert, then you want to automate what's already working. You don't want to automate anything that's not working. So um, all that to say, uh, live webinars and um, sales calls are what's worked really well for me over the last uh, few years. And so usually my sales funnel is like, I'll post about it on Instagram, I'll get them on my list, um, and I'll invite them to get on a call with me, or I'll post on Instagram. 
and I'll invite them to a webinar or on my list. And then from um, my list, I'll promote the webinar or getting on a call with me. So it's usually very simple. Um, I think where it can get a little bit um, more complex is like the amount of emails that you have in between, what does the follow-up look like, but it really doesn't have to be that difficult. Sometimes my sales process, like before I started doing like more like super high ticket, it was just like, um, it was Instagram DMs to checkout page. It was like, girl, here, go to checkout link. I'll see you in our VIP day. <laughs> So I don't, I don't mind DMs because I don't mind being salesy. So it's like, we're going to be salesy right here on this Instagram DM and I will see you um, on our first coaching call. So, um, you know, a sales funnel could look like anything, but you, you really just want to lead people to the, to the place where you feel most comfortable selling. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Uh, so good. And I, I like that point about, um, mastering it first um then automating because there is so much pressure to just like get right into automating it guys and it takes time to like yes. get <laughs> actual consistent sales with whatever funnel you've built so thank you for that starting small um and not being overwhelmed we had a boo on last week so you know he got us together with <laughs> love 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 him um but yeah there's definitely a starting point and then you grow you grow from there so thank you just for um confirming that so ah oh, this is so good yeah it can be overwhelming mommy day yeah definite so Maya you know you're not only bomb at creating content that snatches us balls okay on a consistent basis <laughs> but you're also so great at organizing content this is one of the things that um I really like took a hold of <laughs> in some of my coaching with you is just you know organizing how you get content out there to the people. So for those of us who need a little help in that department, could you walk us through your process for sort of planning, creating and scheduling content consistently, any pointers you have for those of us? Who need yeah, for sure. Um, so I think it, like the first thing is kind of knowing what platforms you wanna be on. I used to like be so obsessed with organizing my content, especially when I was blogging consistently. Like, so for those of you who don't know or, or who haven't been following me for a while, like I used to blog very heavily 2015, 2016, and then started to like dwindle in 2017. Um, I used to do a lot of blogging and I used to do a lot of live video. And so sometimes I would like repurpose the content where whatever I said on live video, I would just transcribe it and then put it into a blog post. So I think knowing what platforms you want to be on. I think this is important so you can already make a decision of like, okay, where do I want to be visible? Because like early on, sometimes you're like, okay, I need to be on Pinterest. I need to be on YouTube. I need to be on LinkedIn. I need to be on Twitter. I need to be on Facebook. Or you want to be on all, like you think that you want to be on all of the platforms. And then when you try to do it, you're like, wasn't nobody paying attention on Twitter. And I'm also not making money on here. So what are we doing? So for me, I feel like I'm kind of like just strictly Instagram. I tweet a lot, but really just Twitter is just fun for me. And sometimes I just do my little quotes on there, screenshot it and post it on Instagram. But I would test out a couple platforms that you enjoy being on and that your audience actively spends their time on, test it out and then see what you really like and then commit to those. So maybe you commit to Instagram, um facebook and maybe like one other thing like just pick two or three and don't exceed that and then do that consistently so first like deciding the platform then deciding how often do i want to post and i think when it comes to creating content consistently sometimes we think oh consistent means every single day and it doesn't consistent is really just about having a clear pattern so consistent could be Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. What's your beat? What's your momentum? What is your pattern? Um, so decide what that is. And not even necessarily a pattern where people are going to be like, oh, I know she's posting on Monday. I know she's posting on Wednesday. I know she's posting on Friday. Sometimes we try to like name things based on the day of the week. And it's like, uh, your audience really doesn't care, especially the way the algorithm is set up and people are going to consume content based on when they have time, right? So it doesn't have to be like, here's a motivational Monday post for you. Here's a, a winning Wednesday for you. Like they're not really usually that focused on the day. Having the consistency just lets you know when you want to prepare to be able to put out your content so you stay consistent. So knowing the day is more important for you than it is for your audience. 
Um, and then what I like to do when I'm, you know, thinking about creating content and trying to batch my content and plan in advance is I write down the list of things that I want to talk about. Right. And, you know, this is something that you might be able to come up with having a conversation on the phone or just having a DM conversation or just generally asking your audience, Hey, what would you like to learn from me? Or what are you struggling with when it comes to, you know, whatever the transformation is that you're trying to create. So then you might make a list of like 12 posts, like, um, let's say you are somebody that is teaching people how to go vegan. So you might say like, um, five, uh, five huge mistakes most people make when trying to go vegan and three simple recipes that you can create, um, to have, uh, to introduce more plant-based meals in your, um, in your, uh, uh, like your menu and then like whatever topic you want to talk about regarding your industry. So first just outline it then, or like list it out. Then the second thing you want to do is then go back and like bullet point it. So then you might like, you might list out your, your five steps to, or like the five mistakes of when you're trying to go vegan. Then the second article is, you know, the three or the three easy meals of when you're trying to introduce more plant-based foods into your, into your menu. And then whatever the third article is, then bullet point that. That way you don't have to feel like you have to start from scratch every time you're trying to go write an article. I don't really write out all of my posts in full in advance, but because you know your topic so well, if you can at least see the bullet points, by the time you're ready to go write it, it might take you maybe like 30 to 45 minutes. So you're like, oh, here are the bullet points. I remember now like what I want to say about these. And then I'll just usually like sit in my bed or sit on my couch and then just like write it out. I like to write in like places where I feel comfortable because I want my, I want my content to feel like natural and engaging and conversational. So I'm usually never like at my desk, like I'm structuring my content for the week. It's just like, okay, I have these bullet points. Let me just do it on my phone really quickly. Cause that's how I feel comfortable creating content. So I think understanding the platform, um, making a list of the, uh, titles and then bullet pointing the information that will go inside of the post. And then when you're ready to post on Monday, maybe Monday morning, you'll write it out in full or Sunday night, you'll write it out in full. Then Tuesday night or early Wednesday morning, you'll, you'll write it out. I love that. I'm just writing. Uh, <laughs> I actually write my newsletter sitting in my bed, like, and I never thought about that connection, but like, I, it doesn't feel right writing it anywhere else. <laughs> right. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. I can't like sit at my desk and write a newsletter because I'll get annoyed. Right. Right. It, it, it's a whole different vibe, like between desk and like comfort place. I'm, I'm going to exactly. write that out. I didn't even realize yeah. that. It feels so professional when you're at your desk. And then like, usually like I'm only texting people from the bed that like I'm cool with, or I have a relationship with. So now my newsletter feels like, yeah. oh, you know, Maya just sent us an email. So that I wanted to so feel like. Good. That is so good. I love that. Okay. So I think, um, so we have one more question and then um, we're going to open it up to um, the floor for any questions. Um, and this is just a selfish question that I'm curious because, you know, your content is just, it's so bomb and, and it's also creative and I feel like fresh and innovative. You know, you're always doing different things. I've loved your documentary on um, Impact Weekend, which I'm hoping you'll tell us more about here in a little bit. So um, just there are so many things. So I'm just curious, you know, what do you do? How do you keep it, keep your content so innovative and fresh? Do you go anywhere for inspiration? <laughs> laugh because girl when you talk about my content I'm like what content is she talking about <laughs> <laughs> whatever it's just it's just your perspective on stuff or it'll be a gift that you share and it just feels like you know it's just dope I love it <laughs> um for the documentary um the person the producer that did it uh diamond williams she pitched me on it so honestly it wasn't even my idea she was just like hey i want to talk about your journey to impact i see that you're getting ready for impact weekend i would love to do the behind the scenes and i'm like sure so long i don't have to do anything because my mind was just like impact weekend heavy i'm like girl you and your team can come show up and you can film me and then y'all figure this out um, so that was her idea. And honestly, I really did enjoy doing it. And I'm looking forward to doing it again and, and filming months out from Impact Weekend. Because I think when we started filming for that documentary, um, it was like a month and a half before Impact Weekend. And I was just so like over it kind of. 
Um, but I, I enjoy doing that. I think when it comes to creating content, like what's fun for people to see is just your journey. Just document the process, document their journey. Like what do you have going on? Right. It doesn't, to me, it doesn't have to be anything big and innovative. Maybe to other people it comes across as innovative, like, oh my God, it's a documentary. Or like, even when I had those, those couple of weeks of like doing my time lapse where I was just showing people like what my everyday looked like. Um, and I decided to do time lapses because one, I like the way they look. I wanted people to see like what a full day looked like, um, you know, as a full-time coach. And it helped me to focus more because if I'm doing a time lapse, then I can't be scrolling on yeah. Instagram. So, um, you know, that was, you know, another reason that I did that. And then with like my timeline content, sometimes I'll just be like, okay, well, I need to post something on the timeline. What story do I want to tell them today? And so I, I do try to be intentional about like, how can I inspire them today by telling a story of something that I've been through or how can I say something that's like funny and relatable? And another thing that I try to do with my content is I try to get people to also engage back. So like, yes, if I, I want to inspire you and I want to tell my story, but then at the end of that, I'm always going to have a call to action of like, tell me about your day or tell me three fun facts about you or tell me um, what your morning routine looks like. Usually when you create content, you want to have a call to action for people to either engage with you, like you tell me about this after you tell them a story, or you want them to get on your list where you can say, oh, by the way, I have a free resource for you. Click on the link in my bio and go buy it. Or by the way, I have a course that's you know only available for the next two weeks, go purchase it. So you want to have a call to action where you're um, asking them to engage with you, you're asking them to join your list, or you're asking them to enroll in one of your offers. Yes, yes. And I, I, I think that's dope how you pull um, creativity, you know, out of just your own regular day, um, out of your own needs, like I need to get off my phone and work. So look, what are we gonna do here? Like, I think that's great. You know, content is not this big, spooky, scary, you know, mystical thing. It's really you, what you've given us today is just shown us how it's a natural part of who we are and, and a natural uh, extension of our, of our personal stories, our personal lives. So um, uh, this has just been so good. <laughs> uh, thanks. Yeah, I think it's like everything is content. Yeah. Everything is content. You know what I mean? Like, this water is content right now. And like, I have the little marks on it where it's like, oh, 2 p.m., 4 p.m. Like 2 p.m. is content, 4 p.m. is content. Like I was drinking my water at 2 p.m. And between 2 and 4 p.m., here's what I was thinking. And I feel like my skin is, is flowing more that I've been doing it for a week. Like this is content. I'm going to drink out of this water bottle every single day for a week. And then I'm going to tell you all my experience about it. That's content, you know? So anything we do can be content. And it doesn't have to be always directly tied to your offer. You know what I mean? Yes. Like this water bottle has nothing to do with impact weekend, which is like one of my, my main focuses right now for my, my three day event has nothing to do with it, but people get to know me by just seeing the behind the scenes of how I'm living. So don't be afraid to sometimes just put content out there. That's not directly tied to an offer because like I said to you guys, People will purchase from you, one, because they believe that you have the solution to their problems. They trust you as an expert, but then they also just want to trust you as a person and as a human. So you want to have the expert part to your brand and you want to have the human side to your brand. And the human side to your brand isn't always going to be attached to a sales page. Mm. There y'all have it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. This is so good. So Maya, before we open up the floor for questions, please tell us about how we can work with you. I know you guys have heard Impact Weekend thrown out here and there. So please tell us more about that and, um, you know, how we can dive further into what you're offering. Yes, absolutely. So Impact Weekend is my three-day live event for primarily um, faith-based entrepreneurs and all women. And basically uh, what I help you do throughout that three days is just help you to master your message, build your brand and help you figure out offers where you can get your business to six figures. And it's like 
one of the best things I've ever created. I have so much fun with the women in the room. Like everybody is so supportive and I have so much fun like pouring into people. And I think my favorite part about Impact Weekend is when it's over and people come back to me and they're like, I, I increased my prices. Like you said, I was really nervous, but you know, I had my first $5,000 month or I, I hit my first five figure month or whatever. So um, Impact Weekend, if you guys want to check it out, you can go to builttoimpact.com and join the waiting list. And then when you sign up, um, I have a Facebook group open for us. So I'm going to be doing a lot of training leading up to Impact Weekend, just so you have some level of clarity by the time you enter the room. And I think the Facebook group is also excellent because you actually get to connect with the people beforehand. So that way you're not like showing up to a conference where you're like, am I going to know anybody? Are these people cool? How am I going to feel? It's like, by the time we get in the room, it's like everybody, like we've already formed this sisterhood and we're like so excited to like dance with our friends, pray with our friends, make money with our friends. And it's like such an exciting experience. And I see some um, Impact Weekend alum in here and some people that are signed up. So for those of you who have already committed to showing up, I'm excited to see you there. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, I love, so I haven't been to the new and evolved Impact Weekend yet. I am definitely planning on making my way. Um, but guys, I went to one of her, the first smaller group ones that she did. And I mean, just life changing. There's no other, <laughs> there's no other word <laughs> to describe it besides life changing. I'm telling y'all. I always laugh thinking about you at it because every <laughs> time we had a break, everybody would be like, where did Marlena go? And you would be like hiding out in another room like notes you'd be like I'm so mind blown I just need to get this out of my head and on notes like you would always disappear and we're like well she's gone again so we'll just see her at the next session <laughs> it's just so much like I gotta process like I just need to just you know Jesus be talking at Impact Weekend like ugh, it was it was lit for me it was so lit yeah <laughs> well, I'm glad <laughs> yes 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 so anyone um, who has not been yet, uh, I highly recommend definitely get on that wait list. Um, you will not be disappointed. And the network, the people, the relationships that I built there, even in that small group, I still, people I still talk with today, people I pray with today, like it was, it's just phenomenal, y'all. So definitely, I see Christian saying, I can't wait. Yes, 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 yes. I love it. Christian. Gosh, I'm getting goosebumps just thinking about it. <laughs> I love it. It's, it's, it's something that I really honestly am extremely proud of. Like when I, it's like an outer body experience. And I talked about this on the documentary, like when I was on the stage and I saw everybody, it was like, this is crazy. Not even just seeing everybody like, wow, you know, all these people paid to show up to my event, but it was like, all these people are here because I made the decision to not be mm. scared and, and sell. I had to be salesy to get those people in the room for them to have that transformation. And also seeing everybody like love on each other and support each other. Like a fear that I had from going from 15 women to a hundred women was like, Oh, will I be able to create that level of intimacy? Will I be able to show up for them? And it was like, they showed up for each other. So like all the pressure wasn't on me and it just, it made me feel so amazing. So I, I love impact weekend. I'm like, I don't even know if y'all love it. I love it. <laughs> You're looking forward to attending yourself. <laughs> I was low-key jealous that I wasn't an attendee because I was like, they're having so much fun. And on the breaks, I had to like go like drink tea and stuff like that and like, you know, keep my voice ready and like go eat and just mentally prepare. But I was like, they're having so much fun with each other. And I just wish I could like duplicate myself and go have fun with them. But I have to host it. Oh, <laughs> see, one day you're going to have, as it grows, because we know it's going to just continue to just elevate. I mean, one day you're just going to have to be an attendee, let the team take care of it and just experience oh. it. Uh, right. Natasha, you hear that? Natasha's an impact coach. So, like, Natasha, can you run Impact Weekend 2022? You got it, boo. I got you, boo. I got you. I love yeah, it. You will see Natasha in the video twerking, giving a testimonial. Yeah. Oh, she was lit. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. I love it. All right. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording, and we're going to.